Well, it is not an April Fool's joke. Roma, they are held 0-0 zero to zero against Lecce in a very, very frustrating uh, result, match, performance, everything frustrating. Before we get into all of that, as always, thank you to all of our patrons over at Patreon. If you would like to join the group chat, which uh, has returned to its usual um, uh, group of individuals suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, you can go to patreon.com slash Roma Press. And the uh, video version of the podcast, social media, Twitter, Facebook, at IS Roma Press. As always, we thank all of you for your support. It means so, so much, uh, particularly when we have to do episodes like this where, uh, I mean, Andy, tonight, this is truly one of those performances where there you, you get close to nothing from it. There's no positives you can take from it. And I said this in my post-match reaction episode for the patrons. Sometimes the footballing world can be especially cruel. That's not even, again, going to mention that today is the 1st of April, April Fool's Day. Um, having to be treated to the match of Bologna prior to Roma and watching them play free-flowing football, watching them Yes, they were playing Salernitana. Uh, we can preface it with that. But it's not as if Lecce is uh, uh, 29 or 30 points ahead of them in the table. Okay? No, they're not. But they had Daversa. Now they have Gotti, who's a real coach, unlike Daversa, who's a part-time uh, stockbroker. So. Yeah. Well, listen. Oh, 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 fine. Of course, we can get into God, that. No, God, I'm, I, can, I can tell you, if Lecce play the way they played uh Tonight, Survival uh, for the remainder of the season, they're staying up. So they and they yes. do these. If they play the same way they did tonight, and I believe they will, because again, Gotti, my main man, the guy who hated his job at Udinese for so many years, uh, is a good coach, and uh, yes. and he's now in a situation where I think he can really push them. Uh, especially given Sassuolo and all the other teams like Salernitana are doomed to fail. So uh, yes, well I that. Think- we have to we have to also consider that. Did Roma play like shit? Yes, probably the worst game in the De Rossi era so far. There I is an op- about, you know, there yeah, is an I opponent mean, and there is Roma. It's two contributing factors tonight. I wouldn't say that it's only Roma being shit. I think Lecce just were very, very good. Okay. I I would push back particularly that first half. That first half felt like a slow burn that felt like torture that that felt something akin that uh, the, the 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 cia okay or or uh, something you would endure in a, a a gulag i mean that 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 first half beyond angelino from that free kick action i, I woof i i mean bove bove looked I, I feel bad saying this because I, I don't like to be too difficult on, on young players like th- like this, especially when they are not playing consistently. He was so bad, so bad. It, it was almost as if he was not present. Zalewski. There is a penalty on Zalewski. There is. There is a penalty um, on Zalewski. There is a penalty on him. I, I, I suppose I am more so looking for what he contributes, what he does. Very simply, I, I had this. This is the way I described Florenzi when we were in that very weird thing where uh, for some reason we have Sabatini saying he's better than Dani Alves. Uh, you know, and then we have every single newspaper writing about how he's a jolly. And at the end of the day, if I, if I cannot, if, if you cannot clearly define to me what your role is, uh, positioning, what you can do well, I, I don't know what use I have for you. I mean, it's very simple. If I, if I can't name one or two things that you do as a footballer, that jump off the screen, that you are good at this, you are good at that, um, I don't know what you bring to the table at a club like Roma. I, as Zalewski, I am close to giving up hope, and very rarely do I say it this early into the thing. And maybe I am being more harsh. I think you were among the first on this thing with him. I... I I don't know what to even say about him because I don't know what he is. I don't know what he brings. And it's difficult to see him, uh, you know, different positions, wing back, left back, uh, playing further up in attack. And it's still a sum of zero as far as contribution goes. 
the midfield today was a black hole. Uh, Paredes, the one, the the one I, I described for years, showed up tonight. I, I I can't even point one thing out because everything was crap. It was crap. It was crap. It was crap. And then on top of it too, to have to watch before kickoff, Bologna, Thiago Mota. I, I I don't know. And Calafiori, the way he described him too in his post-match press conference, I, I almost had a stroke. I don't know if you saw what he said about him. Um, but I have to, I, I was treated to watching the zone and, and watching them literally drool over this guy. Um, the way they described him, you would, uh, you, you would be mistaken if you thought it was Paolo, uh, you know, if it was like Maldini, the, the reincarnation of Maldini had appeared. Um, I, I, having to watch Bologna play such free-flowing football, score with ease, again, I know Salernitana, and then to have to be subjected to that tonight should classify as torture. Um, so I, I don't know beyond that what else I can really say. I mean, what are we supposed to take from this? It's a, at the end of the day, it's a bad result. I mean, it, it is a Terrible, terrible result. We can't hide that. We can't escape from that. No, it's a, it's an it's an unfortunate result. Obviously, uh, given you know, given the, the 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 performances that we saw from from Bologna and Atalanta, Atalanta win against the oh. Napoli three to zero, Bologna win three to zero against Salernitana. Um, you know, I I'll be the glass half <laughs> full guy and say we got a. We got a precious point uh, over oh, over my. Juventus. Um, what? <laughs> you know, I didn't even. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, l- listen. I, right now, any point counts. So you go, you get one point from this. You you take it. You go home. Uh, you can't be happy about this. And I know that uh, Daniele De Rossi will absolutely beat himself over this result. Um, at least there is food for thought. Because we saw uh, a kind of superficiality that Roma played with uh, tonight, that we yes. saw uh, in the final months of the Jose Mourinho tenure, we saw a Roma team that was very complacent, that let Lecce way too much into the game. Lecce did mm. again a really good job at forcing Roma into a, a position that they were not uh, comfortable with. They pressed them really well. They had a number of opportunities to score. And Roma failed to react, to to meet the moment, which is not what they've been doing under De Rossi. They've always shown up. This time around, they were sluggish. And uh, and it was just not good enough. And, it, and you get hurt and you get punished. Um, it goes on. You know, I... Uh, I I've I've seen this way too many times. Perhaps now it yeah. hurts just because we we were on a roll with De Rossi. We were expecting something different. Um, you you learn your lesson, as in you cannot play with superficiality. It, it's it that's the bottom line because you can say a lot of things about Bologna and how they play and the tactics behind it and how Thiago Motta has rejuvenated players like uh, Calafiori and salesmakers and, and Orsolini. Uh, but what what with the difference between between that showing and this showing tonight with Roma was that Bologna played with heart. Roma were just not in it. It's as simple as that. Add to that an opponent that is fighting against relegation that has a coach that just came in, played one match with them, has them you know has them flowing with new energy, uh, with newly found energy, and that that. You know, that will halt you. That will put a, a, an obstacle in your path. It, not everything is doom and gloom right now because of this result. There is still a lot to play for. Uh, as a result, overall, it sucks. Perhaps as a, as a performance, it sucks even more because you get, at least you yes. get one point of, from this. Um, whereas with the performance, I can really only say that uh, Zviar was the difference maker exactly. tonight for, yes. for Roma. Even on the in the first half when they uh, when they made the very late and as one of our pitchers called out, I, there are a few things that disgust me more when it comes to Italian refereeing. They seem to have a knack for doing the late offside thing, just especially more late than the rest. But we can save that for another day. As Filar was spectacular, I I have to say one of the first reactions that I saw 
in the group chat, and I, I would be curious to hear what you said. Um, I, I saw two or three people right away say, um, hang on. Oh, that, that, that contract renewal of De Rossi that we were so keen of uh, handing to him. Let's let's relax on that. And I, I think to base that off of one match is a bit silly. Do you levy any of this against him? Because the, the thing I don't like, and I do think this is on him, they ha- for some reason, there is something in these first halves that they just seem ill-prepared, which I, I, I do not understand because I, I, after the half, they look extremely overly prepared, you could almost say sometimes. I don't like how they start or begin matches sluggishly. They, that is something that has been a habit under De Rossi. They, I, I would say, definitely take far more time than I would prefer than to get into the match, to, to get comfortable, to understand the way their opponent is playing. I did see some questioning the lineup that he put out today. I would say he was fairly limited. He had it's not as if he had an abundance of options. Okay. You have Paulo Dybala who just returns. Do you throw him out there, start him? Uh, I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk it at all, uh, particularly given the calendar that Roma have coming up. Uh, if this was a match that you have to run the risk of him missing, I would say this is probably the one if you had to pick out of all of the ones coming up, this is probably the one you say, okay, if we have to rest him, it's this one. Uh, particularly at the potential, again, risk of losing him further. So I, I don't have any problem with that. Bove, Zalewski, I can understand. I didn't like those decisions. I, I was very surprised Awar did not start. I think you were too. I did, <laughs> I did not like, for some reason, it seemed like Karsdorp was being asked, hey... Tonight, we don't want you to defend at all. I, I can't count how many times in the first half someone from the midfield had to track back and cover the ground uh, that he left behind him because he was being asked to play so high up. I was dumbfounded by that. So I do think there are some things you can definitely ask questions on, but we're not talking about contract renewal or uh, give it to him or not give it to him based on this match. I mean, come on, uh, let's be serious here. I would say, if anything, this is more so probably on us, uh, on all of us, uh, the collective uh, supporters, media, whoever. We flew too close to the sun. We, we, we can admit it sometimes. We flew too close to the sun. We got excited. But at the end of the day, as what, you said, what are we talking? What, what, what are we talking about? To get, got too excited? We we have this is this is our record in Serie A with De Rossi: seven victories, two draws, one loss. If you had told me that, no, no, on, no, I'm, I'm, on, oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm just I'm speaking in general. I'm not talking. This is still the same team. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I, no, okay, uh, yeah, but I'm just saying we're, we, you know, we got too excited. Listen, look at this. Look, look at this. Res, look at these results: seven victories, two draws, one loss in ten games in Serie A under De Rossi. If you had given anybody that prediction in mid-January, everybody would have gone crazy over that. Yes, they would have. Kind of they would have signed in their own blood. They would have taken yes. their own blood. They would have dipped a pen in it, and they would have put their signature on that. Yes, because because. You at this moment in time again. That's why I say one point is not too bad. I, I choose to be the glass half full guy here because what De Rossi has been doing has been beating all the expectations. The expectations were this team is dead in the water. They can't go on. They're they're done. And De Rossi is going to get cooked and he's going to get kicked out and he's not going to last long. We're talking about seven wins, two draws, one loss. At this stage, what preceded De Rossi's arrival is what prevents you from getting these games wrong. Tonight you get wrong, but tonight is a match that you can get wrong on so many occasions, so many times. Yeah, well, I'm not going to say the thing I always say when you drop points in the in the months like this one. I am I am more so saying, uh, referring to maybe. Uh, how we, we, we sort of just forgot in the previous six months. We were saying, oh, well, look at the table now. Man, after Juve lost, okay, we had some patrons of the group chat say, hey, why not aim for Juventus? 
And that my first thought was, hold, whoa, 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 hold, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. As bad as Juve may be playing, I mean, this is still Roma. I, I think the match of tonight, as you correctly pointed out at the beginning, this is sort of the welcome back down to earth sort of result. Welcome back down to earth sort of performance. This is still the team, as you said. There are some, that Rossi is you just mentioned has pulled off something akin to a miracle since arriving. Um, but I don't know if there is any manager, uh, exorcist, anyone, anything capable of excising the result. It, it, by the way, this is something that exceeds manager seasons. This is something a match like tonight. We've seen one million times in previous years just replace Lecce with Chievo Verona. And you could find about uh, uh, 10 dozen examples in the previous years. So this is something that uh, this isn't new. I would say more so it, it is new in the sense of you had many people flying very high thinking, OK, well, we can go. We uh, Forget fourth position. Go for Juve. Go for Juve. Go for Juve. I, I, I think a match tonight really sort of balances you it brings some balance to say very clearly yes this team is good but they do far too often allow these mental flaws or lapses to come into play because having seen Bologna before the match they know coming into this before you even kick the damn ball okay we need to get a victory we need to get a victory otherwise we lose ground to Bologna and they missed and, that now. Yeah, but they've been doing that. But they've been they've been doing that. Preceding this match, they've been doing it. How many times did we go into those games against El, El Verona, Salernitana, and on and on and on with the notion of we have to make up the points. We have to yes. we have to make up the points we lost in the first half of the season, and and we have to They're keep up the Everyone pace. Everyone drink now. And we have to keep up the pace with the other teams that are in the Champions League race. The The problem is you collected 29 points in 20 games to yes. begin the season. 29 Correct. points in 20 games. That in of itself prevents you from making any single mistake. Tonight was a mistake. Tonight was a match that definitely was not one of the best. Tonight, you, you saw a Roma team that did not meet the moment. But these things happen. These things happen. They've happened to a number of teams, including Bologna in the Coppa Italia, including to Atalanta at the start of the season. It happens. The problem is you've made so many of those mistakes before De Rossi's arrival that now you're in a position to where, where you have to overperform. And yeah. in, in the first games of De Rossi, we overperformed, as in, we really, I mean, the, every time we would play at the same time at six o'clock or whatever, a day after our all of our opponents had played already, and you were forced to get a result. And Roma did that. Tonight, unfortunately, you come away with one point, uh, whereas Bologna and Atalanta get three. But I, I just want to reiterate that it, in my mind, these things can happen, especially at this time of the season. They can happen. Fatigue sets in. You have uh, everybody fighting for their lives, including a team like Lecce, that with a new manager will fight for its life uh, until the last day of Serie A. So it can happen. The problem is that you're in a situation where everything points to you not being able to afford these kinds of nights. Exactly. A any objective not achieved this season, it will not be because of tonight. L let's be very clear. I think ev everyone knows that. Even the ones saying, don't give De Rossi the contract extension. If you if you are basing that off of one match, I, let's calm down. I know tonight sucked, but we need some semblance of balance. As far as this match in the build-up to the derby, so I don't know... How many teams in a, somebody at Alta can can look into this for us? Our 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 uh, data and analytics staff is on. Uh, they, they are still recovering from from Easter. They're going to face another team this weekend in the derby in Lazio that has a new manager. 
So who was it of recent? Sassuolo. They also had tonight. Lazio. Who else have they faced recently that had new managers? I, it feels like they've had this run where they are facing teams who uh, within weeks have just changed managers. But I, I'll, I'll put that aside. That aside. I don't know if you saw Lazio against Juve. I... I mean, the thing that jumps off the jumps off the screen. Um, Tudor, defensively, they were far more organized. Uh, the fact that it was uh, Juve obviously has something to do with it. The the um, one of the clubs that he was an assistant manager at. Okay, fine. But I I watch tonight, and then I think, okay, well, going into this next one, you have a you have a you are facing a club. It has a new manager. They're going to be fighting, as you said, fighting for their lives. And my worry is, ahead of the derby, is this sort of result is is one of those that we have seen carry over time after time after time. You allow, uh, you get a good result, and then you get one bad one, and then it bounces into two, three, four more. I mean, it seems like that happened the entire season. I mean, that that uh, <laughs> the home draw to begin the season lasted that wore on for one full month so avoiding that at all costs needs to happen the derby is what we're going to find out this weekend really what sort of character or what sort of growth this team has made from a personality and a character standpoint my fear is again that su- that this superficial team that goes out there and, and acts as if they are entitled to some sort of result because that's the particularly in the first half tonight. I did not like what we saw in the first half whatsoever. I, I they looked lethargic, they looked tired, they looked unmotivated. So going into this, okay, I I just said about fifty different things that don't intertwine whatsoever. But I, I guess I'm trying to make sense of what what I should expect coming into this derby because. I, I truly don't know who this team is at times because they still show those things that we saw in this in earlier in the season under Jose Mourinho, where it, it's just I, I hate it. Okay. I, I hate watching them, you know, uh stroll about the pitch very casually in a very cavalier manner, as if, yeah, we've you know, uh, we're the better team, we're higher up in the table, we are going to get this, everything is fine. I I just worry because, again, you are facing a team, new manager. They, of course, are going to be motivated. His first derby. I I, I seriously feel that that this point here is, again, going to be one of those uh, one of those moments in time where it is like A, D, or B, C. That's how we will refer tonight. Tonight was either like one of those matches where we saw a collapse or we saw a real good bounce back. I am worried about obviously the collapse but then you look at the table and the fine margins we are speaking of here they are, are extremely very, fine are very very, very fine. fine and i'm not going to even mention again we talked about it in a previous episode the, the run of games they have coming up here okay you have the derby you have udinese you have milan in the europa league so it could go wrong very quickly if you allow yourself mm-hmm. even a moment's time to uh, allow your uh, mentality to go down to yeah. you know to, to to continue this cavalier attitude about uh, walking about the pitch not giving you everything I, I mean it could turn ugly fast just you you don't i'm not going to show the graphic again just google who roma have coming up i mean this it, it's it's now you there is no other option. You have to get something in the derby. How about a win? How about I win? How about I win? I, I mean, I feel like anytime it comes to these top uh, top five, six teams in the table, it's become to a point now where we should not expect any sort of result. A, a draw is an automatic uh, a victory in our minds. I hate that. I can't stand that. Um, but with a result like tonight... On top of the dozens that you had prior to the arrival of De Rossi, you're going to have to win some of these. You're going to have to win some of these. So I, I, I am petrified that tonight carries over. I hope it doesn't, but it has to start with the Derby. Where are you with the Derby, though, as far as your expectation? Because I, 
I, I'm I'm definitely less agitated than you, man. You sound you sound on edge. You sound you don't sound a... like you've had a, a very peaceful Easter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds like you're this close to a Roma-related nervous breakdown. Uh, let me tell you that. <laughs> Watching Bologna prior to this just made it more. I said this is my post match, man. Like the the footballing gods, sometimes they prefer to be more cruel than necessary. And having yeah. to watch that free flowing football of Bologna, I know. Like this yes. tonight was oof. It's okay. We'll get through it. Um, no, you know what's what's frustrating, perhaps, is that okay. Yes, you know, you every once in a while you're still confronted with the Roma that uh, that we saw under Jose Mourinho, and that makes sense. You're never gonna. I mean, ne- never in the history of uh, in season changes did you see a team completely turn it around and become uh, unrecognizable compared to the team yes. to the previous version of it. it it's not. It, that's how how it works. It, 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 there is so many factors at play. There is a whole preseason. There's, you know, there is stuff that dates back two and a half years off playing one way. What happens with De Rossi is you have to exactly overperform. I mean, think about the situation he was called in to manage. Think about the results he's obtained. Um, and you look at this result differently. Now, the stretch of games that we have right in front of us is... Uh, is, is uh, incredibly hard to say the least you're facing Lazio you're gonna face uh, Milan twice in the Europa League um it's going to be tough definitely uh, tonight as you say could be a make or break as in this could be one of those games that we look back on and think to ourselves well this was the wake-up call that was needed uh, or rather this put us to sleep and and we didn't wake up from this that's where perhaps De Rossi comes in uh, mm. to to change something as in because perhaps tonight more than any other result was painful um let's let's remember Roma draw with Fiorentina but the way they draw gives us this propulsion of po- yes. positive energy right Diego Llorente scores the equalizer at the death it's a wonderful goal and that changes the entire outlook on the match uh then the the win against the Sassuolo, the loss against Bright, loss against Brighton in the return, like which is sort of you know wiped away because we go through, we still advance to right. the next round. It's dismissed easily. Okay, but tonight was painful. Tonight was painful because the expectation was win. Uh, that's why I think. It could be interesting. This could be where De Rossi comes in and says, hold on, guys. This is not cool. It's not cool. Yeah. It, it, perhaps it, it, it could have slipped by uh, before my arrival. But now that I'm here, this is not good. We're going to go into the derby knowing fully well what to expect from the, the opponent, knowing fully well what the opponent is going to do and how the opponent is going to pair the match because... Again, as always, Lazio, the the weight, the importance they put on the derby is unparalleled. Uh, And that's where I think De Rossi could really have an impact where you go and say, okay, that's that's De Rossi. That's okay. That's on De Rossi, whether in the good or bad, that's on De Rossi. Um, Because that's where you see what the team is made of in adversity. Tonight was a result that did not benefit you. Tonight was a result that did not sit right with De Rossi. And he's going to get pissed off. I can tell because he's not in front of the cameras yet. And, yeah, that, he's the and you know, he's always the first one to be in front of the cameras. So tonight he's not in front of the cameras. Uh, that means he's pissed off. And I think we all can relate to that. But again, there is a very important question of what you did prior to De Rossi's arrival that dictates the importance we attribute to tonight's result. Tonight's result is bad, but it's not the end of the world. If it's the end of the world in in in, in some of our, our perceptions, it's because everything that led up to tonight, the 29 points in 20 games, immediately, immediately forces you to avoid having nights like these. And Roma are not superhuman. Roma are the less, the least superhuman team in the world. Yeah, they're touchable. Yeah. They're vulnerable. They're fragile. So nights like these will happen. The problem is you can't have them at this point. 
20 seconds before you said that he wasn't, he wasn't speaking. He, his face appears on the zone and he's still speaking now. Uh, he is complaining about the penalty not being called on Zalewski. He says, some, uh, I just have the captions on, so I'm giving this very quickly, about the rules needing to be equal. He didn't see much on the pitch. Um, however, uh, uh, he, he can't understand why, why that episode wasn't whistled, why the, it still can't be given. I, listen, I don't think, again, a, a penalty or non-penalty being awarded was the primary reason for tonight's draw. There were a lot of bad things that Roma did, some good, um, but a lot of bad. I, I just think, again, this was about a lack of mentality, this one. You, you can't act like that, particularly after an international break. You have to come out firing. Roma, for some reason, always seem to struggle after the international break, but uh, they have to make up for it now this weekend. And... I, I, I suppose, fortunately or unfortunately, with this upcoming run of games, uh, th there really are no alternatives how, you know, prior to the season, we see a list full of fixtures and we can say, OK, well, we can afford to draw there. If we lose there, it's OK. But if we win here, 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 here and here, we're going to be good. But then we can drop points there. Well, there's, there's no options anymore with this final stretch of the season. It, it's there's only one option. Uh, we will have to see how they react. We will be back before or after the, the Derby. No, before the Derby, no? <laughs> yeah, before the Derby. I'm trying to, I, for some reason, I keep thinking today is Tuesday. All right, we will be back prior to the Derby. And hopefully, hopefully, Roma can make it up to us uh, on Saturday. But we will chat again in a few days. Until then, ciao.